So through um, the last year, I have kind of figured that out. I don't know if everyone has seen these before. This is put up by the government of Alberta in by and much. Okay. But I'll take this off for right now. I'm fine. As I'm double an, vaccinated. As an, as an instructor, I can speak without a mask at, at school, so, so it's okay for you to do it. Too. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So this is a super valuable thing. You can get this at West Coast Fee Supply or most uh, suppliers. This one I purchased, like I said, through uh, the um, Alberta government uh, tech transfer program something, and it has it all. I'll pass these around. And what's so valuable for this is that these are the days of the month, okay? And it will show you the check for eggs and um, uh, it will say, uh, reader lays the eggs. So, and it just tells you each stage on the wheel. And so if you start on the sixth of the month and uh, you have just done or found some eggs, and you graph on the ninth, and then the progress of how it develops its, uh, its, the uh, larvae from the queen, when it will hatch, and it's pretty close. Like, a, give it a day or two, it might hatch a little bit early, um, but very, uh, very similar. So I'll show you the little bit of uh, if you do uh, decide to buy yourself a breeder queen or if you want to get a special kind of queen, you can buy them and they come to you in a live queen box. And it kind of looks like this as vents and it's all packed nicely and, you know, everything is in there and you pick it up and, you know, it's all fun. So that's one way of doing it. But this is costly because I bought some from Saskatchewan. I thought, oh, I'm going to get some, uh, you know, that's the crap queen. I'm going to have great breeding queens and all this. Well, every one of mine got superseded or have stopped. And I have, I think, one that survived out of about a dozen. And at $55, Plus airfare uh, becomes quite expensive. So uh, the other thing was for me, I want to be a sustainable uh, bacteria. I want to be a queen and not, you know, have a heart attack every time something dies because the cost is more. And it's very discouraging if you lose a hive, like. I have to like you that's another three hundred dollars, you know, two hundred dollars. Um, and even if you can get them, that you can only get them at certain times of the year. So, uh, who I learned the most from was off YouTube, JCE, and he has uh, one that says, I think, a complete queen rearing job. And uh, I this earlier. Look at it earlier. So this is, and he he is he is so great. Um, there's a little bit of too much. Uh, too many uh, things on it. That, uh, that Anyway, it's uh, JCB. Jason Christman. Christman. JC Christman or JCB. The microphone is telling us you have to speak loudly. Okay. All right. How about if I come up this far? Uh, okay. So uh, let me see if I show you.
So this is the fella. And if you scroll through it, he has like uh, three stages of screen rearing. Watch it. It's uh, very good. So I uh, started uh, to, the first year that I tried to do it, I didn't realize the importance of a starter finisher buy. And so I was able to get them going, but I they didn't complete because the high wasn't strong. So this year I made sure that I picked my very best high that I had and the strongest, the most furrow of resistance, the most, you know, everything, you know, that uh, no Zemo wasn't as strong or problem. And uh, so that was the hive I chose. The queen had, you know, really good lane patterns, very strong. So I decided that would be the finishing hive. And I had another hive that lost the queen just before I wanted to do it. And I you need to remove the queen out of a hive. And it has to be a fairly strong hive. And I, lost my queen so I thought okay you're gonna be my starter and I threw a bunch of I thought okay I'm ready to go here and you must uh starter high queen list for a day or two so that they're looking for a queen and they know they have a queen because if you don't they will kill your queen and uh they they will be defending the hive so uh, what I did was I left it for a couple of days and then I got all set up and I decided, okay, it's time to grab. So uh, when I did it, I have this little stand. This is actually like a bit of a wax melter, but it doesn't have to be this. It can be anything that can hold up a frame. This I bought from Ikea, it was like less than $10, can work just as well, right? And the idea is that to make sure that you have a cloth that you can cover uh, your, egg, your grafted eggs, as well as when you're working on it. So when you have to graft, these are JC or JZ cups. They're the easiest to use. And all you do is just you buy this frame, and it is a grafting or a queen raising frame that you buy from West Coast at the supply and or online or wherever you get your equipment. And uh, you just pop them in. And get them prepared and you pop them into twist bits because they then they lock in. And you put as many as you want to. I did 30 uh, of these. And then what I did was I set these up on uh, in front of me and I had a wet cloth so that when I uh, take the graph, I can cover it. It must Stay moist. So then you go and you pick out, you know, a great frame, not this one, uh, full of nice uh, young eggs. You know, and a young egg, it looks like a piece of rice. And then onward, it starts to make a small seed. And it's really the small seed that you're trying to grasp. You can get it where it's just the seed, but once it starts to curl all the way around, your chances of success are less. So then uh, we have some tools. This is a German graphing tool. And these are a couple of different types of uh, Chinese or Asian tools. This is the one particular one when I went to Papamondia that I picked up, which I like the best. And if you see it, it has a little uh, 
lifter, and this is the punt to take the graph off. So what Ian taught us was it's much easier if this is bent a little bit. So you just warm it up, and with your tongue, bend it over. The German one, some people really like. I haven't tried it yet. It looks a little tricky to me. It looks more like a, something I do with my teeth. But, um, and there's uh, different qualities, different holes. This is my finger. And so, could you just show that up to oh, the camera? Yeah. Here. Okay, so, and this is the German one. <laughs> Yeah. And these ones, again, you can get at West Coast Bee Supply or wherever on one year, but they're not, they don't last forever. And uh, so um, then what I ended up doing was I uh, get my beautiful frame of eggs, lots to choose from. You don't want to take you only eggs for your hive pounds. Your hive should have been. And just try to pick one that um, has a lot of new uh, eggs laid. And that you can see lots of seeds. And really look for a frame that has a lot of royal jelly in it. Because the royal jelly is what's going to give you the success. Because it will keep your egg moist. So then when you go and Set this up on your frame with either a magnifying glass if you have trouble uh, seeing. I see best just without my glasses because I have uh, near, nearsighted. And I put one of these on my head, one of these lights, so that I can see deep into it. If I'm having problems, I will use a magnifying glass. I also have one of those ones that go on your head. But it's so magnified that I kind of get lost in there and I just end up throwing it off. And, uh, but if your eyesight's bad, then that's what you have to do. So with this curl, then you look, you go into the comb, into the cell, you Try to go on the edge of the cell wall, push down and turn at the same time and lift that little leg out. If you damage it all, discard it. If you get it stuck on the side of the wall, start again. Because any damage to that egg will give you an inferior queen or you'll. So you really want to practice. You know, if you're not even ready, just practice doing it. And you just keep doing it. You probably have, you know, a hundred eggs that you can fry. And then all you do is bring it to the top, right? And you put it down gently and give it a push and lift off. And you'll see a bit of roll jelly and you'll see your little egg in there. And then you take your cloth and wet cloth, the damp cloth, not wet. And just cover that one egg until you work from the other. And you work down your row, you fill this all up. And that's your first one. Keep it covered with the, uh, with the cloth until you're done all your drafts. Um, and then there is a, a way to put roll jelly. And that is, that you put your frame, get your cups all ready and put it in your starter for a day. And uh, the bees will lay some roll jelly in there. Oh, they'll put some roll jelly in there for you. And that makes it a little bit easier to put your eggs in. So then once you've got everything all done, you're going to bring it back to your starter hive. You know, put it in. It's a queenless hive, and you leave it for, I think it's uh, 24 hours. Like I said, just watch YouTube. 
uh, the details and everything of how many days and all that. He explains it very well. And the next, uh, day after or two days after, they will start building the home. And you'll see some of the home already going like this. Not this much, but you will see more like this or like this you know, smart, uh, small starts. And they'll be covered with bees and they will be feeding that egg and developing those eggs. And then uh, after a couple of days, then what you want to do is uh, remove that frame and you're going to put a find your queen in your finishing hive and you are going to isolate her in the brew box with a queen excluder. And then you will uh, put uh, this frame into uh, one of your uh, frame spots that has uh, pollen and honey on both and fruit. So you want to pick fruit that has honey and pollen on the bottom, a nice fruit pattern uh, that's packed. And uh, you're going to put that in there and they will finish. Once they finish them, there's so many days. If you look on that calendar, it tells you exactly how many days. And then you pull them out and they kind of look finished like this with a kind of a cone, this one, this one, they're a cone shape and they're sealed on the bottom. So most people, then you wait a certain amount of days and some people, they use these queen uh, cages and they put them on top of the cell like this, and they stick it into uh, the uh, the frame on the side of something like that. I really had trouble with this. I squished more than uh, it was worth. And uh, Jason from JC showed me this method, and you also. Uh, you, if you have a whole bunch, you have to really watch for when they start to emerge because the first one that emerges will kill them. So it's a real timing thing. And this kind of made me nervous because we get a lot of rain and I'd be running up to my half year, you know, every, you know, 15 minutes when on that day. And I just can't do that. So when he uh, said to on a video to use an incubator. And this is just not that expensive. You can hear the fan, right? That's a control. And it's for catching it, right? For chicken. So, and you just uh, set the temperature. It has all the temperature control. It tells you the humidity in there. And it's, it's, it's just a controlled environment. Now, I have noticed that these are not 100% uh, good with the temperature. So I ended up putting this little egg, and this is for my hatching for my egg, uh, because it's so precise. And so I, this little egg goes inside, and this is dead on uh, as far as temperature goes. So I had two different temperatures that I could pump very critical. And he talks all the time, like 90, 98 or something. I have to, you know, break all this down, and I will just watch the video again, and I'll be like, that's Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. Fahrenheit, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. And uh, anyway, and so what he did was he uh, shows you to build on a little piece of now, these are queen cages. You can get these online. 
I, I tried to buy these the West Coast, but they didn't have the bottom part. And I don't know why. I'm not that really interested in why. And it won't work with a have this part. And so this has little holes on it, as you can see on that. And the black one, I nail with just the finishing nails onto these boards. And they pop off. Like this, right? And then these are called roller cages, and they're for transporting queens or catching your queen. I have one that uh, I use all the time to in my belt uh, to catch my queens. And I just put a little cork in the bottom of the screw so that I can easily take it off, put my queen in there put it back on and then just lay it on top of the hive and all the queens just keep feeding her. I know where she is and I'm not worried. But, you know, I do that whenever I do any hive inspection uh, where I need to find. The roller roller hot, uh, roller, and that fits right into your belt or your pocket. I did that because these ones are harder to get in your pocket because of this sticking out. So, and that allows them to hatch without killing each other. Uh, yes. This is, so anyway, so this is set up. And when, when you get to the point where your queen, your cups are ready and they're all sealed like this one, you just simply take it. Oops, sorry. This goes like that. And then this pops in there. Just like that. And then this. Okay, I, I'm mixing it up. Sorry. Okay, it goes like this. I did this like a, a while ago when so now I'm a little all right, so that goes like that, right? And you just leave them like this, you fill them all up, all your queens that have, uh, have been uh, sealed, as many as you have. And then I put a little bit of water in, in here just to keep the moisture, not too much. And then this just goes on top. You set your temperature and you wait how many every day that you need. It says to do it. You can watch them emerge. It's quite neat. Otherwise, and, and each one of them is in that case. And they cannot get out until you want them to get out. And so then once she's in there, then you have this, this. Seal and then uh, like this. She's in there and just keep her in there, put your finger on. And then, uh, sorry. And then I just put that on there and you have your queen all ready to go. So then at that point, pull up, you know, some make it, some don't. And then you need to put them in a mating pie. So I made this mating pie. It's just a, a deep box, screw box. And I separated it first off. And I put screen bottom, right, so that uh, they could breathe and that they're, they're going to be killed uh, from overheat and confusing the summer. And then I divided this into three sections. So each one of them has an entrance and 
on each side so that they only can go into those three frames. And then I put the uh, release the uh, queen into each one. This is a uh, canvas that I purchased uh, through Ontario. It's a duck canvas and I just bought it online. And I will send the name of the company that I bought it from. They're really great. And you can buy it. This is the uh, number eight, I think 16. Or so, and you can see how the bees prop up the hole. You know, they just go to town on it. Actually, I'm going to convert to this uh, and use it as an inner cover instead of a inner cover. And then I will drill all my uh, boxes with a hole instead of the entrance. But that's another story. Anyway, so each one of these, the first one is brewed. Uh, then you have uh, honey and pollen, and then you have empty or some honey so that the queen has room to lay what she makes. And so you release the queen, make sure you cover it once you release her, and then put each of your virgin queens, at this point they're not naked, and you're going to wait and we're up to a month before you check. You, I would think that it's all on, on the uh, calendar. And she will go out and she will make many times strong and strong hang out in the mating yard um, and service the queen. And uh, then the queen comes back, hopefully. And if she doesn't, she got lost or a bird picked her off or because she's a bit larger than the rest of these. So a lot of times she'll make a bird or walk or which And I had a uh, probably 13 that uh, virgins that uh, emerge and I only got seven. But part of it was that I tried to do it in a date box. I do have one of these that has a date box because that's how I learned it first. And I didn't have near the success as I did in the, in the date. Almost I, out of six, I got five, maybe clean out of two boxes. So I will change all of them to uh, date. Uh, the other way of doing it is that you can use the mini uh, here just like a small pie and you fill it up with some bees. This is where the syrup goes in and the bees will start building homes. They'll be cleanless. They'll be really looking for queen. And in the meantime, when they don't have a queen and you want them to start building, you buy these uh, hormone strips that makes the queen or the bees think there's a queen in there. And you can purchase this hormone through the bee uh, supply. So then, uh, once you find that you have a maybe queen, you go back however many days that you decide, I like to leave it about a month. And then you go back. And you look for eggs. If there's eggs, larvae, or cat larvae, you got me. And she'll be in the box. And like I said, you know, I had one and I was trying to mark her with the markers. I, I don't know if everyone knows the clean markers. You can use these ones, they're a little bit less expensive, or you can use the proper uh, ones that you can buy. So I was trying to catch it, and I do have a queen catcher, which makes it a lot easier to mark up the size, but I forgot it. Um, but I've been trying to catch them with the, just on the back of the wing, and she flew away. And I went, oh my God, you know, this is a good 
but not too great. She flew right by. She knows which eye it is. It wasn't, you know, nothing to me. And basically, that was it. Anyone have any questions? Three. Yeah, this is three frames, so it's nine in total. And this I built, uh, my husband helped me just with a saw and made clips. And the bottom is just a thin board that you should have to fold them. They have to be completely closed. If a queen can get into the other side, they will put the other. So you have to make sure that when you do it, that it is completely uh, sealed. I even had to put these little bars in so that it held the screen because I was realizing that they get it between that mm -hmm. and like the tape and everything, just so that I felt secure that they could get from one uh, section to the other. The same with the top, this was very handy because it completely closes and then you press on to the side and then just put your lid on top. Did you say you have your cleaning chambers uh, in the individual cleaning in there? Are they leading to those holes inside? Yes, they lead through this hole and enter and, and so leave. All three of them are going to the side. And they don't worry about the other holes. No, they know they're high. They, they're, and the bees know for uh, pheromones. So, uh, they, uh, I didn't have a problem with that. Maybe one did go in and maybe it killed her. And that's why I got seven. You know, that's Mother Nature and I'll leave that to Mother Nature. You know, I know that it's, uh, it works because I got seven of these queens and they are beautiful, strong queens. But I really stress that you want to pick your best five here, you know, that to do the eggs. You don't want to fear your queens. And local queens are the best. And if you can make your own queens, it's the best. So, and if you can make extra, you can sell them as fast as you can make them because everybody wants to. And that's about it. Um, how do you how do you store the queen? How do you how do don't you don't you need other bees to feed her or take care of her? How do you do all the Keeping them, how um, long can you keep her? Okay, keep you, you can keep her for if, if it's still warm weather. Okay, after she started laying and everything, I transferred her to new boxes because I'm going to try and winterize uh, some new boxes, which I I did. And I did need one queen because one of my queens died. So I just joined those three into the queenless hop. And I just kept her in the cage to make sure that the others would accept her. I sprayed with a little sugar water so that they mm -hmm. don't have any too many smells and they're licking each other and getting acquainted. And it, they all took and they were all fine. And I have uh, six minutes to start my, uh, I bought a trailer and I, I'm going to set up those hives on my trailer and they will live there on permanently and I will chase the honey flow because I don't have enough nectar in my area for more than what I have presently. And I also want to um, provide a service for the backyard beekeepers uh, or backyard gardeners that want pollination, but they don't have the pollen. Where are you located? Uh, Mission. Okay. It's right beside the pool. And there's just not. We have a lot of evergreen. Right. And we have palm. Mm -hmm. um, and I get lots of propolis because of the saps. Um, but I don't have a lot of nectar. And I have planted a tremendous amount of plants. And I will, and trees, linden trees, and acacia trees. But they're all young, and I still don't have it. And I'm not getting any younger, so better get moving. <laughs> and uh, so I will eventually, but right now I don't. And I have the ability to to do this. I bought the trailer for nine hundred dollars. I just thought, okay, 
I can do this. And I want some fiery honey. So I'm going to try and bring it together and see if I can get some fiery honey. See what just it's my hobby. I'm retired and I really don't need or you know, I mean I like to make money, but I don't need to make the money because it's a hard job and it's heavy and it it takes a lot of time. How much did you hold a uh, queen bearing set up do you think would cost someone? Not much. Is? Not much. These are all, I mean, this would be your most expensive, but you don't have to get such a big one. You could uh, get a smaller one. It's just you need to keep that control. And by using, and you can do it with these. There are many, many ways of rearing queens. This is just what I found that worked for me. And I have the incubator already because I have chickens. And I just wanted to not have to run up to my apiary all the time and lifting and getting my bee out to because I'm allergic to, I'm sensitive to bee stings. And so I have to fully dress uh, most of the time. And, uh, and so I didn't want to have to keep doing that every you know half hour, hour to make sure I caught the emerging queen. And then as it turned out, I did have a queen that emerged, two queens that emerged uh, a day earlier than the rest. So they would have killed all of them. And this way, you cage them. You just caught them before? Oh, no, they came out a day early. Early. Okay. And so they were in there, and I just gave them a little bit of honey to, because there's no bees in there. Yeah. And a little bit of water on my finger. They were fine until the rest all emerged, and then I set them up. I had this all set up, and uh, that's all I did. We have an online question from Josie asking uh, about wasp deterrence while you're doing the grafting and while the hives are sort of with less bees as they're rearing. What kind of wasp deterrence? I had no problem with the floss because each of these hives is strong on its own, right? I don't have a huge floss problem. Um, and I do the grafting indoors uh, at a desk, or you can do it inside your car, your truck, if your app areas or your hives are away from your home. I'm fortunate that they're very close to my back door and I. I can do it in, on the desk. And uh, uh, yeah, so it's not a problem with wasps as far as doing grafting. And your starter finisher hives are, are your strongest hives. So if you have a healthy, strong hive, you shouldn't have problems with wasps. They will defend uh, against most wasps. Unless you have a a very bad infestation of wasps. Then you got to get the wasp killer out and go find your nest because they will definitely kill your, your, your hive. So you don't need any wasp deterrence? I personally don't. Uh, I don't have, I have wasps around and I have bald headed uh, farmers. Um, and uh, but they come later in the fall, or when you're doing your sugar feeding in the fall, they want to come around. I don't find them in the summer so much, except for if you have a weak hive that's done. And then they, they zone in on that hive. So make sure you keep your hives healthy. Uh, look into your hive and make sure you're, you're, you know, you're controlling your nosema. I, I uh, took a course, and one of the best things she told me, one of the uh, speakers, and that's why I'm going to change to this uh, method of using your canvas and putting, uh, you have your bottom in the course, and also uh, to put a, a hole on the top for ventilation. And she said, bees don't die from cold, they die from and she said, put that hole the size, I think, three-quarter inch. And she said, the reason I do it three-quarter inch 
because a cork from a wine bottle can hurt. And when you don't want to be open, just put that cork in there. And so I went out and got myself a three quarter inch drill, and that's my final tool with them. And sir? Go ahead. I'm just going to say, so generally speaking, you're just going to want to raise queens on the table on two occasions. One is at the early spring when you, uh, you might have a weak high, and then I would assume in July, roughly, when you want to split. No, I'm going to, I, I did mine actually quite late. I didn't, I didn't have the nerve to do it in the spring. I was like, you know, uh, I'm not sure about this, and so I kept reading about it and feeling more confident. When I had Queen Messiah, I had a very strong, which was already had supers on it and everything, and just tons of beads. And that my best five, she, she's always performed, always giving me the most honey, and that's who I took the egg from. I would not take the egg from them because you're going to get. So you're saying that you can just continually raise queens as long as there's eggs. Absolutely. So you can raise queens right up until August. You can keep doing it in that same starter finisher. If you have a beekeeper, you generally do queens, I assume. Absolutely. Early spring, when you look at all your lives and you see a weak dog, get rid of that queen, put the one that you raise in. And then later in the year, say July, when you're splitting, you would want to I assume, uh, reserve it. Well, I split in the spring. I'll do walk okay. okay. in the spring. And they'll make their own queen, but it takes time. So if I can make queens early, then I can split and add a queen to the spring. Okay, so right. generally you want to do this for sure early. Early. Because then you can do for split. And you, can... and you don't have to do walk. And then what you can do is continue. Does everyone know what a walk away is? Yes, yeah. it's gambling. No, I have had great <laughs> success with walkways as long as you make sure that you have eggs that are young yeah. enough that they will build clean. Do you know is there any if you do a split, you got to find out if you could buy a queen and introduce it? Yeah. Otherwise, you could also allow them to raise their own queen. That's right, that's a walkway. Yeah, that's what we call a walkway. Okay. Is it preferable to introduce your own queen? Absolutely. Statistically, you're going to get much more trouble. Local queens are always better. Well, and you don't have to wait a full month for you know, the whole process. process. Right. It's that lost month. They're making honey right away, right? You've got those queens ready. You do the splits, you add your queen right away. And they're creating honey right away. Yeah. 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 And your high split, and if you want to expand and you're doing a split, you want them to be strong as soon as possible, right? And when you add a queen, add a small amount of uh, sugar, water, or syrup, one to one in the spring, two to one in the fall, right? For feeding. And give her a small amount so that she thinks there's a honey flow, and she'll start laying more eggs. Because she thinks the because she thinks there's enough food. She she thinks the work the food is coming, right. and she needs more, you know, work to support and get that food, right? And you need queens anytime you think John Queen is not performing. So if let's say you have a um, more that you catch with the old queen, you might want to pinch her off and drop in a new queen. Which is quite a frequent occurrence when you have a new queen. Absolutely. If you if she's not producing a lot of eggs and she's really slow, I have a problem with pinching. I'm just making another five and you know let her be slow. I've had a queen that was really slow producing. I just let her be, and as soon as the honey flow came and they all started bringing stuff in, she started. Producing. Well, there are certain people that recommend you to replace a queen each year. Yeah. Commercial. Commercial. Because? Because they want productivity 
and they want lots of honey and they don't want to wait. I prefer to let Mother Nature don't, don't play with you too much. Like, don't let them do it. They know what they need to do. It's not interfering that screws it up. So, you know, we also, as beekeepers, want to assist them and help them with the bees. But really, they know what to do. Uh, but if you don't have enough nature, then you have to feed them. Don't start, don't let them start. You know, and that's how people lose their hives faster than anything is their start. You check your hives, and if you don't have pollen in there and you don't have honey on the corners of where she's laying or any reserves, they're starving because there's not enough food to keep the hive going. So, and they may have spawned you, and that's why you get swarming. The same thing. Lift your hives early, don't let them split, right? And do your split and put your queens in it or do walk away. If you don't feel comfortable about it, do you walk. Any um, other questions? And we're going to wrap it up because we're out of time, but Marion is hanging around here at uh, the um, clubhouse. Online, there are no more questions at this yeah. time. So uh, if you have any questions about split or about uh, queen rearing specific for Marion to answer. At this time, Marion, thank you so much for You're coming welcome. and sharing. It was awesome. What a great success for you this year. Yeah. If we could offer Marion a round of I I so enjoy my my bees, and I just want everyone to the feeling of raising your own queen is is really a great feeling. You know, I was like, yeah, yes, yeah, you know, something that we're something we're about to be proud of. So thank you very much. Uh, the official part of the meeting at this time is over, but if anybody here um still has questions as well for people in Zoom land. If there are any questions, please feel free to uh, email the club and we will have uh, pass them on to Marion and she will be able to answer them. So thank you so much for coming and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank, thank you. you. Are we done? Perhaps you want to just stop. Oh,